Verse 20. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him with one accord. And having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace, because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting, The voice of a God, and not of a man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down, because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. But the word of God increased and multiplied. And so here, King Herod, he's in Caesarea, and he's not happy with the people, but the people depend on him for, for food and for aid. And so he gives this amazing speech, and they all start worshipping him. I'm sure a lot of it was flattery and just appealing to his ego to try to get him to like them. And so he'd favor them and provide for them. And so they start worshiping him. And instead of him giving God the glory, he accepts the glory. He takes the glory for himself. And it says immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and he breathed his last. And so if you study history, history actually shows that he didn't die immediately, but he died a few days later. He got very ill, some say with a stomach illness, possibly could be related to worms, or the reference to being eaten by worms could be actually dying, rotting in the ground, getting eaten by worms. But the major issue here is that God struck him down dead. And I believe the Bible when it says an angel of the Lord struck him down dead. In other words, God struck him down dead. And so is God in the business of just striking down people dead? No. This is a rare occasion where this happens. In fact, in the New Covenant, we only see God striking down Ananias and Sapphira and striking down King Herod. And these were all people that were not born again believers. Ananias and Sapphira, they were false converts. They were most likely Pharisees that had crept into the church. And so both of them for their sin, God struck them down and killed them. So people try to use these scriptures to put fear on the church and say, be careful if you sin, God might strike you down and kill you, which really is an abuse of the scriptures for a number of reasons. Firstly, we don't see God killing any Christians. Okay, these are unsaved people. If God was to punish and kill believers for their sin, it means he's violating the finished work of the cross. At the cross, Jesus took up our sin and he took the wrath of God upon himself for our sins so that it would not come upon us. Now, if God was to judge us and punish us for our sins, it means that he's punishing the same sin twice. If he's already punished it in Christ, he will never punish it again in us. And so if God was to kill us and strike us dead for our sin, it means that the cross was not effective enough to deal with our sins. But the cross was effective enough to deal with our sins. Therefore, God is not in the business of striking down and killing believers if they sin. But does that mean God strikes down and kills unbelievers for their sin? Well, technically, God could do that. If anyone is not in Christ, then technically they are still in their sins. We know that on the day of judgment, books are going to be open and people are going to be judged according to what is written in the books. And those that are not in the book of life will be cast into hell. We know that Ephesians 5 says that don't be fooled because of these things. And it gives a list of all the sins. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon unbelievers. And so those that are not in Christ actually are still in their sins. Even though Jesus died and was punished and took the, the penalty for our sins. If you're not in Christ, you don't receive the benefits of what he did on the cross. And so those outside of Christ are still in their sins. But as soon as they come into Christ, they receive the forgiveness of all of their sins. But until they're in Christ, that is not so. And technically, God could still judge them and punish them for their sins. But we don't actually see that happening a lot. In fact, we only see it literally twice in the New Covenant. We don't see it happening a lot because I believe Jesus did. He took the punishment on the cross and ever since the cross, We've entered into a dispensation of grace. In between the cross and when Christ returns, there is a dispensation of grace. And in this period, God is patient, not giving people what they deserve, but willing that all would come to repentance and to a knowledge of Christ. And even Jesus on the cross said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so if God was in the business 
of judging people for their sin, then actually he would just wipe everyone out who sinned. Every unsaved person who sinned, he would just wipe them out. You know, why would God only punish Ananias and Sapphira and Herod for their sin? Why wouldn't he just punish everyone for their sin if God kills people for their sin? No, this is a very rare occasion where this happened to King Herod and to Ananias and Sapphira. And it's very hard to build any kind of a doctrine on these two events. And you certainly can't build the doctrine that God is pouring out wrath and judgment upon people's sin. Because the reality is if God is doing that, then he has to wipe out the whole planet because everyone is sinning. But God is not wiping out the whole planet, even though people are sinning, because he is gracious and he is patient. He could wipe out the whole planet because of people's sin, but he's patient. He's not giving people what they deserve. He's allowing time for people to repent and turn to him. And we only see this kind of thing twice, and it's only at the very outset of the early church. With Ananias and Sapphira, God was protecting his church from Pharisees infiltrating and trying to bring it down from within. And actually, after they were killed, the Bible says that none of the rest dare join them. Nevertheless, the people held the church in high regard and many unsaved people were getting saved and added to the church. And so the rest the Bible talks about is the rest of the sect of the Pharisees, the religious people. They saw Ananias and Sapphira getting killed and so they didn't dare to join the church. And so God was protecting the church from this infiltration of law and legalists who were trying to mix Christ with the law. And right at that infant baby stage, God protected the church. And we see after that happened, the fear of God came upon people, all came upon people, and the word of God spread and multiplied and many people were saved and added to the church. In this situation with Herod, after he died, we actually see in verse 24, it says, but the word of God increased and multiplied. And so perhaps this was also God's protection of the early church. Herod thought he could just attack the church, kill James, and just that's going to be fine. And the Jewish people saw that happen and they and they were feeling emboldened. Yeah, we can attack the church. Next thing, Herod takes the glory for himself, which even the religious Jewish people who are persecuting the church, they would have had a problem with Herod doing that because that is blasphemy, taking the glory that belongs to God. And so he was killed. And so perhaps that sent a message to the religious Jewish people, that guy that you held in such high esteem, you were happy about, he was persecuting and starting to kill the church. You thought he was the instrument of God. Actually, he took the glory from God and God struck him down dead. And you were partnering with him to try to persecute the church and God's judgments came upon him. Perhaps God was sending some kind of warning to these religious people. You need to back off from hurting my church. They had seen Ananias and Sapphira that tried to infiltrate the church to hurt it, being struck down by God. And they had seen King Herod who had tried to hurt the church, being struck down from God. And perhaps God was saying, religious people, you need to take your hands off the church and stop persecuting the church because the same thing could happen to you. Now, I don't know that for sure, and I can't prove that. And there's just a lot of speculation. All I do know is that I'm not going to build any kind of doctrine that God judges and kills people because of their sin just based on this example and on Ananias and Sapphira. These two events are too thin and too obscure to build any kind of doctrine about God killing people if they sin. And so we need to be very careful not to do that. <music>